everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Christine Stanwood. The man wanted by police in Fargo and Moorhead since yesterday is now behind bars. The Cass County Jail says Josh Ashenko was booked into the jail about 10 last night. He's facing charges of shoplifting, failure to appear, theft of a motor vehicle, and violation of the 24-7 program. Moorhead police say that the Metro Street Crime Unit has been working to find Ashenko for several days. Decision 2016 moves to New Hampshire today after a nail biter in Iowa last night. Republicans had a winner not long after the caucuses ended, but Democrats had to wait till this morning. Tracy Potts tells us in some precincts it took a coin flip to decide. Hi guys. Good, morning. Good morning. The candidates are on the ground in New Hampshire, campaigning furiously following last night's Iowa caucuses. On the Democratic side, a razor thin finish. Hillary Clinton edged out Bernie Sanders. I stand here tonight breathing a big sigh of relief. Thank you, Iowa. After counting all night, Clinton was declared the apparent winner by the narrowest of margins, less than half a percentage point. Iowa. Thank you. Bernie Sanders had this reaction right after he landed in New Hampshire. We look forward to doing well here in New Hampshire. Uh, and after that, we're off to Nevada and then South Carolina, where I think we're going to surprise a whole lot of people just as we did in Iowa. Ted Cruz quoting the Bible, claiming the biggest victory ever in Iowa caucus history. Tonight, Iowa has proclaimed to the world Morning is coming. Morning is coming. Donald Trump landed in second place, barely ahead of Marco Rubio. We will go on to easily beat Hillary or Bernie or whoever the hell they throw up there. Rubio, a close number three, was the first to declare victory here. Well, this is the moment they said would never happen. All the candidates pledging to battle it out in New Hampshire and beyond. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Des Moines, Iowa. The New Hampshire primaries are one week from today on February 9th. Breaking news this noon afternoon, the Clay County Sheriff's Office is responding to a robbery in Hitterdale, Minnesota. Hitterdale is right along Highway 32 north of Hawley. Sheriff Bill Burquist says the, Lake Bank of, the State Bank of Lake Park was held up. Other businesses in town were told to lock down. Valley News Live has a team on the way and will update the story as more information becomes available. Also new for you at noon, an 18-year-old woman from Detroit Lakes is facing charges of disseminating pornographic work after allegedly forwarding nude pictures of a 16-year-old girl to two other students in the criminal complaint. In the criminal complaint, a 16-year-old girl attempt, admitted to sending nude pictures of herself to a male and also 18-year-old Stephanie Johnson Jonathan admitted to receiving the pictures from a 16 year old girl and forwarded on to other students. According to the report, Detroit Lakes Police says that Johnson says she sent the pictures to two other students because she was mad at the 16 year old girl. Johnson could be sentenced to as much as seven years in prison or a $10,000 fine. And little flurries are falling outside, but the conditions seem fairly mild. Let's go ahead and check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Robert? Yeah, Temperature-wise, not too bad out there for this time of year. Temperature is a mix of some teens and some 20s, and in many cases at or above our normal highs for this date. The coldest spot, 16 in Roseau, 19 degrees at this hour in Thief River Falls. We're at 25 here in Fargo, and we'll see temperatures steady as we head through the rest of the afternoon. Wind speeds are starting to pick up. We'll see some northerly breezes as we head through this afternoon, 10 to 20 miles per hour, with some occasional stronger gusts, and then just creating some wind chills in the single digits in some areas. As cold as 3 in Roseau, 7 in Thief River Falls, 8 over in Devil's Lake. Satellite, we've got a lot of cloud cover out there, and underneath those clouds, we do have some snow to talk about. And some snow has developed here in the uh, Central Valley from uh, about eight on down towards the uh, Castleton area. Could see some minor accumulations with this band of snow, not anticipating for this to last too long, but could create some slick spots where you are seeing some of the uh, darker blues there. Could see, be seeing some steadier snow, some lighter snows falling here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. As we head through the next couple of days, big storm system off to our south. Most of that energy stays south of us. We'll have that chance for some flurries and snow showers today. Tomorrow, some cooler weather. And as we head through the next seven days, we've got some warmer weather and then some cooler weather to talk about. Also, so several snow chances to talk about. We'll detail all of that coming up in just a few minutes.
Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. A massive dive in oil prices over the past year is sending North Dakota into a billion dollar budget shortfall. The state will deal with the shortfall by using all of the year in balance and nearly $500 million from the budget stabilization fund. Governor Jack Dalrymple announced yesterday that state agencies' budgets will also be cut by more than 4%. He says this short-term fix will keep the budget balanced through 2017, as required by North Dakota Constitution. Public school funding will not be affected. Be careful when filling up your gas tank. The Minnesota Department of Commerce says the number of credit card skimmers is on the rise. Three men were arrested in the Twin Cities, and a number of people have been victims of identity theft. The skimmers read your card number, even PIN number, feeding them to criminals to make fraudulent purchases. Experts say the best thing to do is pay inside. Otherwise, check the pump to see if anything is suspicious, use a credit card instead of debit, and check your bank statements regularly. Amped up security at the Jason Aldean concert in Grand Forks was expected by many fans. But the long lines cause escalated frustrations after it caused some to miss part of the show. Renee Nygren, a producer at Valley News Live, and her friends showed up an hour before the concert, knowing they'd have to get through bag and wand checks, but still missed the whole first band. The Lara Center says it received a number of complaints, with some fans waiting over an hour to get through security and attempted to fix the problem by moving people to different entrances and speeding up the wand security checks. The Lair Center says it ordered metal detectors, which should be installed in the next couple months. Jason Aldean performed in Bismarck following his show in Grand Forks, but a spokesperson for the Bismarck Civic Center says they had no issues with security. A Fargo North student has settled on a new senior picture for the yearbook after the school district rejected his first one. Josh Renville wanted to use a picture of him holding a gun, but the principal said it would it violated school policy and the school district agreed. The new one, as you can see here, is with a bald eagle sitting on Renville's shoulders, but he's not happy. Renville told Valley News Live that the school is, is censoring him from his freedom of expression.